Finally have an excuse to bring back out the planishing hammer. I haven't used it in years. Already did a little bit of it. It's working great. So this is a uh, pan lid for a giant like lobster 100, boil. 160 quart pan. Yeah. So then you can do some uh, crawdaddies or get your scrimp boil on. This is what you do it with. Anyways, this is going to end up being, you can turn around and follow me. That's how cameras work. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> so this will end up Should I turn right it on? Here. Yeah, I should probably start it. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Um, We'll get it painted up like the uh, tire holder. I'll make the sides and everything for it. But right now I'm just shrinking this edge down um, where it had a, a 90 and a 90 uh, or close to it anyways, shrinking it down and making it round. It's pretty close now. It's got a slight bevel to it, but we'll keep taking care of that. I'm sure everyone's seen one of these before, so I'll spare you the thing, just a Harbor Freight version of it. Turn it down a little bit now that it's working much better. Good job, that's great. shrink it you can see when you do that you flatten it out it puts everything under tension so then when we finish shrinking this down that'll pull that back down straight so we can do the rest of that by hand get it flat again so what i've been doing now is giving this some shape kind of like uh using this like a power hammer you know just a planishing hammer uh, i've got the shallowest die on the bottom currently um so i'm not doing a whole lot and i realize this has a lot of texture and stuff but it'll sand all out just fine this is plenty thick this is probably 080 maybe 090 it's it's fairly stout so i can do quite a bit to this before i start really worrying about it getting thin but i'm just running it back and forth edge to center this way and then kind of doing quarter across and getting shallower towards the center uh that way actually let me grab a sharpie and i'll kind of mark out what i'm doing so what I'm doing is this is my center right here. So I've kind of treated this as in two sections or four sections rather, quartered it like that. So when I'm going, I'll uh, I'll do from here to the center and back like this to stretch it back and forth and back and forth. And then when I'm done with that, I come through and I, I go back and forth this way across the center here and get shallower and shallower. And then, um, just as a little bit here, I'll kind of spiral my way out a little bit. And I know that's a big mess that you're looking at right there, but I'm doing it three directions. Zigzag this way, so inside to outside, left to right, and then a spiral around the outside edge. And I'm doing all of this because I want it to stretch evenly so I don't get tacoed and twisted real bad. It's got a little bit of twist in it right now, but I can fix that once I set my, my ring that's going to attach on this lip here. This still has to be shrunk down and, and made 90 and trimmed up and cleaned up. But you can see all those little hammer marks in there. That's what's nice is I could have done all of this by hand, but every time, every seen these little dips, every one of these little hit points, that's me having to hit it with a hammer, and this thing does it a thousand times a minute versus, you know, my 10, 20, 30, 50 times a minute, whatever it is, uh, as I get slower and slower and more and more tired. So, anyways, a little Harbor Freight planishing hammer. You can definitely shape metal with this thing. It's not just for knocking dents out. It will actually do some damage, so you got to be careful with it. So, they adjust up and down tighter and looser. I've kind of done all of this um, already with... Um, uh, on the lowest setting, I've worked my way up, but this only fits in one way. And then I give it a couple of clicks. And so like right here, you can see, I'm gonna go in to out this way. 
like this, around, and I'll do that on all quarters. And then once I'm done with that, I'll go side to side, kind of zigzag my path back in. And I'll spend a little more time in the center because I want this out here to get uh, more stretch in it than I need to get out here because I want the center to raise up. So I spent a lot of time out here just doing circles and circles like this. So I'll show you. No, I'll show you once I put some air in there and turn the air back on. And one of the things you can see is it's a little flat through here. So this needs to, to raise up a little bit or I overstretch this not sure which it is, uh, and I can always shrink this by flipping it over and hammering it the other way, which would bring this down, bring this section in, but what I think it actually is is when I went to uh, flat these edges out, I think I got a little too deep over here, but I can straighten that out once I get uh, to shrinking the lift, once I have enough rise in here that I'm happy with. Next, I'm gonna try and go ahead and take out some of the planishing marks here since I'm not trying to actually just planish it to a mirror finish. It's easier to sand it, especially as thick as it is. I'm just gonna use a little 120 uh, on my orbital here. So now, as you see, as this rolls through the light here, my first couple of times through, just real short passes, you can see this has been planished here in the hammer, but this has not, or has not as much. Same thing here. These have been hit real heavy. These have been hit fairly lightly. And this just looks like it hasn't been hit hardly at all through here. So you need to go back in and touch up those areas and we'll slowly work this down till it all looks pretty uniform. So every one of these little shiny spots here, it's just like having a guide coat, every one of those little spots that you see shine is a spot where I either have to sand down stuff around it to get it smooth, or I have to go to the back and hit it with a hammer from underneath to get rid of it. So I'm just gonna work on that for a while. You can see these are those lines from where I'm going back and forth, which makes sense, which is why on the back there's a lot of high ridges and I'm having to just tamp them down when I look at it. When I look at it from this side, 
and I run my hand over it. And I mean, you can still see the stripes in here. So I have to actually go in between all the planish marks here and kind of work that down. Uh, I'm not really concerned about this. I'll put a scuff coat back here. Um, again, what was this? It was a big pot lid. Uh, let's see if you can still read it. Let's see. Thunder Group from Alaska. Anyways, not really. That's it. Came in to Alaska from China. Um, so, anyways, this is just a big aluminum pot lid. Uh, make a big old bowl of soup. So, anyways, I'll keep working on it. I don't want to watch me hammer on it for hours. So, bring it back when I'm done. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna try and shrink down this edge a little bit uh, and make it 90 like this is here. Uh, I wanna make it 90 because what I've got is this is an old trailer tire cover or like the back of an RV cover, piece of stainless. I'm gonna trim that off flat and just roll that around and make that the body of this, but I need these all to be at 90. So I'm just gonna use a piece of this pipe and I'm gonna slowly shrink this edge down and uh let's see where we get start to see a bit of a pucker where I'm hitting it here and then I see a, a bump in it like this that's when I want to go in and I want to hammer the top of that and pinch that part back together and then flatten the bump out in the center and that's how you slowly kind of shrink this around and again having this dish really helps because that adds a lot of strength to the center here So I want to evenly space these around. It's a 24 inch circumference or diameter. So times 3.145 equals somewhere in the 75 inch range and change. Um, 75.3 or something. I don't know. You math it. Um, if I do, that'd be seven and a half inches. If I did 10 of them. If I do 20, it'll be uh, 3.25, three and a quarter inches spaced apart all the way around the outside edge. So I'll pick a point and that's what I'll do. So, Clecos are your friends. Clamping down a little bit ahead of where I'm at. Pushing down here.
can't stress enough that, you know, on this metal table with aluminum, again, not how you treat metal that you plan on leaving metal finished. But this is getting painted and body work, so it's whatever for me, but. Now you can really plug it in there, can't you? Yeah. job. Do you end up cutting it off or do you, you flatten it out? Uh, I just managed to get it to straighten up. Work. One more. Right there. This, this marks the bottom. Perfect. Around there. It is perfect. You know, I think I have a 24 inch round, like eight inch thick aluminum blank at the house. I may just make a back for this, keep it square like that. Why? Less work. Less work? Yeah. Been cutting this to fit the body. Did you make it a half inch smaller? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Man, that turned out nice. Here, you hold it up. I want to see it. Yep. There. What do you think? It's well, I know you're not using my... Use. I may have just done it on purpose. Naturally. He likes to use my machinist markers. Dude, that's... Go up a little. And to you a little. Up a little more. Up a little more. Up a little more. That's one more. Head it's, not, it's too, it's too high. Boom, right there. 
they are lined up perfectly in the uh, vents. Oh, that oh. is just, oh, that makes me happy. It's really good. And a little easier than you thought it might be. Uh, no. <laughs> really? Three days of screwing with this. Two days. It's quite significantly heavy. So. Yes, it will, it'll have some heft to it. We hit something. Yeah, yeah. But something will know. Yeah, something will know. So anyways, that's how you make a rotary engine for your uh, mystery machine. So, yeah, there you go, as one does.